And welcome to the Skein Stories. You're here with Marie, episode 190, on a very, very chilly, wet, and miserable day here in the Bay, uh, 5th of September. How is everybody? Uh, big apology because it looks like for some reason it's playing silly buggers again and we're not going on to uh, YouTube, but we're definitely here with Facebook. So if you have anyone asking questions, to get them to flick over to Facebook and they can come and say hello. Good morning, everybody. Um, oh, yes, it's telling me I've got, oh, I don't know why. I know, you have a big couple of weeks and then the tech just, just decides not to play ball. Um, had a nice breakaway, popped up to see the parentals and the family in Gisborne uh, at the end of last week for four days. So that was really nice. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all coming in. And so that was lovely. It was good to see them. It's been quite, in fact, I've not been up there this year. Uh, so it was nice to get back up there and uh, visit the old stomping ground and see everybody, which was neat. And just sort of... <sighs> Take a big breath after Knit August Nights because it was pr pretty full on. And, you know, it took me a wee while to get back into it again after um, having two years off, really, sort of not actually having the event. So it was really wonderful to be able to get the event up and running, to have everybody there, to pretty much have the whole thing go off without a hitch. And it just felt good, felt really, really good. So, I will be starting planning on next year. If you need the dates for next year, 24th to the 26th, I think, looking at leaning over and looking at the wall planner for next year. 27th, 24th to the 27th, there you go, of August uh, 2023. So get that down in your calendars. So that is definitely going to be on again for next year. Ethan's already planning. He's already planning. And you know what I've now learned with the Ethan after the few years that I've known him is you just let him go because that's the easiest way to deal with it, isn't it? Uh, and speaking of which, yes, I have got Shoji on and I'm going to, in the newsletter today, uh, I am just covering off, I've got some pictures of the Shoji to show you front and back so you can see what it looks like. I've got, and also some suggestions uh, using the combination that I've used, which is the Cozy Whisper Fine combination. But before I jump dive into that, I will quickly show you what I've got on my needles as a bit of an interim because of where before I go next. So this is what I've got on as an interim. And this was actually one of the dips that we had. We didn't have a lot of it. And this was actually a dip that we did to use specifically for Knit August Nights for prizes and um, some select goodie bags. So there it is there. Isn't that gorgeous? It's really lovely. So I'm just doing one of my ever after cows in that. There was just literally one lonely skein left over. So um, I snaffled that for that. So I'm working on that. And then I'm also still got my, um, there you go, my Niata that I've been playing around with too. So I'm chugging along on those. But Shoji obviously getting this bad boy finished was my big mission. I was determined it was... So the history with this, if you're not sure of the history, the history with this is that we, I, I always do a cardigan for Ken, and I asked Ethan last year when we thought Ken was going to happen, what I, what should I knit? He suggested Shoji because Nora Gowan, who designed Shoji, is my all-time favourite designer. It's one of his all-time favourite designers. So he said, yes, you haven't knitted a Nora for years, do Shoji. I said, right, we'll do Shoji. So it's a cocoon cardigan. I'm going to stand up so you can see. And that's and so it's, it's literally like, because it goes all the way down there, there you go. It's literally like wearing a hug, a whopping great big hug. It's, it's like a blanket. And on a day like today, trust me, I need it. The colour, everyone who has seen this in person knows that the colour you're seeing on the screen is it's actually quite a, a vivid turquoise blue, um, which is using our, our cyan, and it is literally a cyan blue. So this is cyan and cosy, and I have double-stranded it back with Whisper Fine. The, the yarn this was designed for was actually a woolen spun yarn uh, called Arbor by Brooklyn Tweed, uh, and it's a DK yarn. So you could actually use um, any DK, and I have seen this finished, um, and I'm trying to remember who knitted it. Um, and if, if you're in, in there, if you're in there, let me know. But I know that I've got a funny feeling. Was it you? Um, 
was it i'm just trying to think jeanette was it you i can't quite remember who knitted this um and they did and so this i think this works also brilliantly in a smooth um dk it's designed for a dk um it would look amazing in albertine or vintage a broad dk incredible but i wanted to a, I really wanted to do something double-stranded because I wanted to show the benefit of having a the fabric that can be made by using a more rustic yarn like the Cozy with the Super Soft with Spifrain and the fabric that you would get from it. So that was sort of my plan. And I felt that this really simple repetitious stitch pattern wasn't going to get lost with the soft halo of the fabric. And as you can see, it hasn't. Um... You know, it is good. Uh, guys saying, never trust Ethan re Ethan recommendations. He advised me to knit something in black. I know. I know. He's a menace guy. He really is. He's a complete menace. Um, it is a legacy, this thing. It is a re it's a very simple or origami cardigan, right? So very, very simple, very straightforward. And, and I'll just uh, pull it up for you she says as i've got the wrong page up typical okay there we go one would have thought i would have been better prepared shocker shocker i know right now we want to do that and we want to do that and we want to do that there we go, and we want to do that. There we go. Right, there's Shoji. So it is a, as you can see, a cardigan. Now, see this way how it's got the ribbing here? This is the way I initially thought I would wear it, and I'm not going to take it off and show you because it's a, I'm about as elegant as an elephant putting it back on. When, it, But see how low that arm sits down here? It actually restricts, my, for me personally, my movement through this area here, and I actually got quite frustrated. So we flipped it round, and I, I'm wearing it in this configuration, and it fits perfectly. It sits perfectly. It fits perfectly. I'm really, really happy with the combination. And that's the origami style there. So you can sort of see that it's kind of like a folded envelope almost, and there's the back. And so you're actually knitting. You start here. This is your cast on edge here. And then you knit this massive big swathe of fabric that goes all the way up around there. Then back rounding finishes here. And you pop a wee seam in the back. And then you've also got a seam across here for, for your ribbing. And it is a tremendous amount of fabric. I won't lie. It's a huge amount of fabric. For the size that I knitted, and I think I knitted the 40, 40 yeah, the 46 to 48 inch size. So I didn't knit the biggest size, I knitted one size back. And as far as the sizing is concerned, I think I'm I'm really happy. I got it back bang on. Um 2.54 meters of fabric. And you know, the first meter and a half was actually not too bad. The last meter was, you know, pretty like, okay, I'm sort of quite sick of this now. And by the time I got to the ribbing, which is beautiful, by the way, like the ribbing, there's the ribbing there. And the ribbing, you actually drop down to a 3.25 millimeter needle and you get this really lovely, beautiful crisp ribbing. Um, but I have to say on a 3.25 millimeter needle at the end of the knit, and you've got to do, I actually didn't do the, the depth recommended I, I because I knew I was wearing it in this format, format as opposed to wearing the ribbing as a collar I actually pulled it back a couple of inches um I have to, I will be honest I was spite nutting spite rubbing that's what I was doing spite rubbing at the end you know and I had to be careful because you know <laughs> it's like I was so determined to get it finished but it is done and to be honest, I'm thrilled, and I'm really thrilled that I've done it. It is a real journey, and actually, if you're wanting to do something that is a journey, repetitious, you don't have a beginning or an end, you just can pick it up and put it down and just enjoy it, this is actually a really great project, and it would make a good alternative to a blanket. Like Some people think, oh, I'll just do a blanket because it's repetitive and easy. Well, this is essentially you're knitting a blanket, and then you're you know, sewing it up and popping a wee bit of ribbing on at the end. So that is essentially what it is. Um, all you require really is time. So as I said, that's the combination I did. 
But the beautiful thing about Cozy and Whisper Fine is that we have a number of combinations. In fact, there are six combinations between Whisper Fine and Cozy that you can double strand together for pretty much almost exact color matches so if you're wanting to do anything in a dk and you're wanting this beautiful and you can see the halo there on my shoulder this beautiful soft halo you can do it we're using that combination and i'm going to put all those combinations in the new setter but this is the bright combination there are sort of three bright combinations and three subtle combinations of the subtle combinations this is my favorite this is champagne with cream rose i think it's absolutely beautiful and this would work with um any of those petite knit patterns that go into dk territory um you can use this combination as well or if it goes up to the chunkier territory that she uses you can then use the whisper dk snug combination so have a look at those combos that I put out in today's newsletter and definitely um, log that there. I'm just working through at the moment the meterages that I can't quite remember what I used for each. I definitely know I um, just broke into the last balls of it. Oh, in fact, no, I tell a lie. I didn't use one of the balls. I think I had seven or eight of these and some of these. I've got to work it out. It does use a lot of meterage. As you can see, it's a big cardigan. It uses a lot, but it the nice thing about using the cozy combination with the whisper is it helps keep the price realistic you're looking um if you're doing this in dk you're looking at a good you know between 21 and 24 balls for the bigger sizes so it is a a really decent size project but you know what if you've just done the bag specials with the pulse and you i mean this would look amazing in pulse um that's the time to do it or if you've um done a whole heap of vintage uh during the sale at 3.95 a ball perfect so that's why i thought vintage abroad would also be another really really good option for this it is just fantastic so yeah I definitely recommend it. The other thing too with Vintage Abroad, and I've got them all sitting here, if you've been on the speakeasy this morning, you may have noticed a wee pole has gone up. And these are the colours that have gone up on the pole. And the reason for that, the reason for that, see if you like this colour, this is jewel. You can actually do it just in a straight smooth in Vintage Abroad and jewel. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. If you um, absolutely love that and you thought, oh, that's a bit of me, I think I quite like the look of that, I tell you why, it's because this is going to be my next project. And I talked about it with Ethan the other day and we were trying to decide, um, let's get the right tab, there we go. And I was trying to decide what my next project would be. And uh, this is called uh, Fox Bay. It's from Rowan. This is uh, on Rowan's site here. And this itself is a cardigan. And it was interesting. I featured a couple of patterns a while back. I think I was talking about actually vintage. I've got a funny feeling. And I came across this pattern. Um, and what caught my eye, there was this pattern. There's another one called Gen 2. Um, then there was another neat little argyle type vest. I loved it so much that I actually went out and went to the Rowan site. Here's a little tip for young players. I know I've mentioned this before, but if you're wanting to get anything that's a Rowan pattern, buy it direct from Rowan. It is actually cheaper than buying it through Ravelry. Um, trick for young players, like quite a bit cheaper. Uh, but I love this pattern. Well, I just had a look around, found these patterns, and it was Erica Knight. And I'm really fond of Erica Knight. She is another designer that's sort of up with my sort of all-time favorite designers. She's been around... Oh gosh, I hate to think how old Erica would be. She'd be in a, at least in her 70s, if not, yeah, at least in the 70s. She's been around for forever. She's classic. Um, she's awesome. She's completely awesome. So as I went through and had a look at this collection that she'd put out, and this is recent. This was only published, I think, last year. Uh, when was this published? I think it was last year. It's, it is new, quite new. There were so many different things that I was like, wow, I love this. Perindale. I was looking for it when we were doing our Perindale showcase. And there were so many designs from this collection that I actually went and bought the book. So you can actually buy this book from Rowan or you can buy the individual patterns in digital copy if you wish. But I love the book because there was just so much there. And it was cheaper getting the entire boo, the book. The book. So there's everything from just a classic um, sweater 
classic sweater there all the way through to um, this little number, which is, for me is very sort of, oh, Molly Weasley, Harry Potter. But all of those colours, a great scrappy cardigan. Um, and I, I would say a lot easier and straight, more straightforward than the sea glass. And this was the one that I spotted this tunic dress for um, the Meredith, which was brilliant um, in that. Uh, any men's patterns? I know, I th well, I think she may have done another collection. This particular one is all female, Guy. However, however, in saying that, the um, a number of the patterns are, she's used a female model, but a number of the patterns are actually, I would say, a very gender neutral, to be fair. I mean, that's very light um, extra texture, but I would say, actually, Ethan and I were talking about this. There were a number of patterns that, um, see this one here is called Rocky. That's a ribbed sweater. Yeah, I, I would say all of these, whilst modelled on a female guy, they are very, very gender neutral. The one I like is this one here, yeah, which is Fox Bay. So this is my next one. My dilemma was the I knew I wanted to do it in vintage. My dilemma was what colour. So Claire mentioned, well, why don't you just put it out for a poll? So that is what I have gone and done. It's over on the speakeasy. So do have a look on the Skein speakeasy. The poll is there. I'm going to keep the voting going um, for a day or two. Because uh, I'm still, well, I, literally, I'm going to keep it going until I finish this. And once I've got all that finished, then um, we'll see what the results of the polls, polls say. Probably Thursday. We'll have a look at it on Thursday. And um, however, I, here's the good news. If you guys are thinking of voting, the good news is, is um, there's no non-winners here. I love all of these colours. So whatever gets picked the best, I'll happily knit it. Because that's why I'm torn, because I love all of them. If I had my way, I'd knit one and everything. Um, so trust me, there's no wrong answers. So that's good news. So that poll is up and live now over on the speakeasy. So go and have a look and see what you think. I'm sort of, you know, I'm of I'm off, I'm off two minds. So that is going to be my next. Um, oh, hold, hold the colours up next to me. There you go, Broadway. So those are what I'm looking at um, selecting. Yeah, I love all this. Bright colours run when I'm a shocker. You know what I'm like. I like anything with a bit of, bit of zing. There. Now, the other hot topic in the knitting world at the moment, as many of you have seen, is uh, as of yesterday, our time, the uh, Stephen West uh, Mystery Knit Along Shore Knit Along uh, opened for uh, availability for sale and kits yesterday. Um, and, of course, not everyone wants to sort of get a kit down from from Europe, but I do know Ethan, he, he'd been compiling some kits over the weekend. He was sending sending me pictures of those. He goes, like, what do you think of my names? I actually said I thought one of the kit names should have been Ethan told me to do it, just quietly. Uh, however, I'm a little bit late to the kit party, I know, but I am working with Claire because um, I've been away. I've got this gorgeous little number. And again, the camera's not really showing how pretty this is. Um, it's just so pretty. It is like, there we go. It's actually a little bit richer and deeper than what the camera's showing. Let's get your face out of it. There we go. Super, super pretty. Um, this is four ply. And I'm going to be putting together some kits with this uh, to go with this. So he does recommend contrast as being a good thing and having, um, if you have a yarn like this which is sort of softly toned or lightly speckled would work well but you need, need to have good contrasts to go with it. So that's my plan Stan with these and uh, I hope to get those actually done up in the next um, day or two. So do have a look out for them. Uh, that is for the, and they will come in everything that you need to complete the shawl. So there'll be two of these and then there will be, um, was it two of these? Yes, two of these, then four balls of one colour and two balls of another four ply. And we'll, we'll do them to specifically go and tone with what's in here. So I think they'll look really, really fantastic. 
Um, oh, well, that one being black. I oh, know, exactly right. He was so funny. He had one called Concrete Dreams that was uh, in Baby Band, it was, which was sort of tonal greys. And then he had a Bohemia One Bev that was very, very bright. And the, and, um, and I think it was called um, See Me Come, You Can See Me Coming. And I said to him, well, that's the one I would have called. Um, Ethan, Ethan made me do it. But, you know, funny so funny so yes i if you're looking to actually get into the knit along action we're going to put those together and you know and i'm going to probably use um oh it depends on the colors actually but i'll probably use like flight light or um even baby bandit as well uh i'll have a look at what i've got it'll depend on the colors and and to and to get the pops there but all of them will be priced i'll um, divide, them, divide them all up so the kits themselves are all priced pretty much the same so uh, we're as close to as I can get it so then that way uh, you get some really really great value they won't include the pattern you will need to buy the pattern separately these will just be the yarn so that's on my to-do list um, for as we getting get going uh, what else is new happening oh this is what, what else is new I'm going to pick the camera up and she's going to grump at me poor oh, over my mess there we go that's the lovely Cheryl <laughs> poor Cheryl I know so that's why I did it because I knew if I asked her beforehand she'd go no you can do a picture here yeah that's the lovely Cheryl so we've just got Cheryl in and started she started last week um it was quite good but I wasn't really here last week much because that means that clearly you could um not have her instilled by Marie's bad habits <laughs> It's all right. <laughs> it's all good. So, so Cheryl has just started. So we're just getting her all up and running. She will be actually one of your first ports of call when you start emailing through or have inquiries. And uh, we're just getting the phone man in so we can get the phone relocated uh, across to Cheryl's desk so she can get to that more efficiently and effectively as well. So it should be really good. So we're really looking forward to that. So it will help with those inquiries and help with the sheer volume of everything. Uh, will make a huge huge difference uh so i'm going to get going because i want to get that newsletter out and i want to get a few bits and pieces also pulled together i will see you again on thursday hopefully you get some fantastic knitting done and i wish you a really good week so until then take care